As a Shopify store owner, you want more organic traffic, but SEO is very complex. This is going to be your golden ticket video where I'll simplify SEO for you and I'll give you A to Z of all of the tricks that will help you rank higher in search results and get much more organic traffic. These strategies have been battle tested and I have been doing SEO for over 12 years and we outrank Amazon and all of our other organic competitors time and time again. So stick around till the end of this video where I'll tell you three super strategies that will just change the game for you. Let's get into it. Before we start, I actually want to show you that these strategies that I'm about to show you, the kind of results that these strategies produce. These clients, when they came to us, they were getting hardly getting around 70 80 clicks per day in early April. From there, we have been able to grow them to almost 1000 traffic per day. So from 2000 organic traffic per month to 30,000 organic traffic per month. And we have been able to achieve this results in just the last five months for them. So the strategies that I'm going to show you in this video absolutely work and they're working right now in 2024 and beyond that as well they'd be working. So whatever I'm going to show is absolutely work. So make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell because I come up with videos like this thrice every week. So without further ado, we'll right jump into it. So the very first thing in an SEO strategy is doing keyword research right. A keyword research done right is like half the battle won. So which keywords you need to target for your e-commerce store is what we are going to see right now. What we'll do, first of all, we'll open Ahrefs. It's an SEO tool. And there in the Keywords Explorer tool, we'll search for whatever product that you sell. So let's take office chairs, for example. And I just loaded this report. So we'll just open this office chairs report and we'll go to terms match and we'll click on view all. So what Ahrefs would now do is it will show us all of the terms that match this keyword office chairs. What we are trying to do right now is see what all keywords are related to office chair that we can target on our e-commerce store. That is the goal here to get a list of all of the keywords that is remotely possible for our e-commerce brand what products and collection pages we can target and we can create on our e-commerce store. So we'll create a list of that from here. But before we do that, we'll have to do our due diligence in terms of competitor analysis, how much competitive that keyword is. And based on that, we'll see how much our authority is and we'll create a list of those easy to tackle keywords and some moderate keywords and some really hard to target keywords. And we'll go about that in phases. So the very first keyword, let's say if you're selling office chairs would be office chairs but obviously kd is a metric that ranks how difficult a keyword is to rank for it's a metric but i i won't solely just go by that i'll do my manual research as well which i'll show you how exactly i'll do it but the first keyword would be office chairs obviously then there is big and tall office chairs so someone who's looking for big and tall office chairs so i'd have a collection page for this then there would be cheap office chairs so if people also look for cheap office chairs then there's ergonomic office chairs obviously you'd love to have that one Lazy boy office chairs, then another one would be home office chairs, use office chairs not so much for an e-commerce side. This is something that people may be looking, the intent would be to buy secondhand office chairs. Another one that could be best office chairs for long hours. So if someone is looking to sit there for long hours, definitely they would look for the comfortable office chairs, office waiting room chairs. First off, you can see that this list gives us a long list of keywords that you can target. You can create collection pages for these. But just having this list alone is not sufficient. You need to see which of these keywords are actually practical and that you can actually target on your store. So what we'll do is now we'll see how we can do our due diligence for each of these keywords. Let's have a look at lazy boy office chairs. We'll just open this keyword and it was updated four years ago. So we'll have almost new data for this. So what we'll see is which sites are ranking here. So the very first thing I see is all of the sites that are ranking have really high domain authority. So even though href is showing that it's an easy to rank keyword, it's not. So all of the sites ranking have really high domain authority. Whereas if you are just starting with SEO, your domain authority, your domain rating would be very low. You'd start at almost zero if you have not done any link building. In that case, I would not suggest you to go after these keywords. What kind of keywords you should go after? We'll look into another keyword. So let's have a look at another keyword where let's say office waiting room chairs hf says it's an easy to rank keyword again we'll do the same thing we'll wait for the sub overview to load 
and here if you see we can identify a couple of low DR sites so this is office discount.com and office furniture c.com these are DR21 and DR18 sites and this another site this is DR30 site DR19 DR26 so on the first page all of the sites that are dominating are low DR sites within the DR30 range this means that this would be generally a good keyword that you can also target you can see these guys have collection pages that are doing well what you can do is on your store also you can create a collection page for this and you can have your product pages listed on that collection pages next step would be also again to do is just don't go by the dr metrics also have a quick look at how many backlinks these sites have to that individual product page so i'll just open their backlinks and make sure to apply these filters that i'm applying do follow one link per domain just do this so and dr above 15 so these three metrics if you'll apply you can see there are two backlinks that they have one of these is because we do seo all the time so i know that this is a kind of a spam link and it's an auto generated link so we'll disregard that this would be one of the links and you can see that there's some sort of 301 redirect that's happening all in all they only have one backlink going to this page now we'll apply the same filter for the site ranking number two we do that and we see that okay they have no good links because this link has dr greater than zero so the moment we apply that filter it will filter that link out as well so that means all of the sites ranking here are basically ranking through just by their domain rating which pretty much means that if you build this collection page we will automatically start ranking somewhere at around second page and with some link building done uh, we'll be able to break into the first page for this keyword so instead of just relying on hrf's kd score which if we would have gone after this keyword lazy boy office chairs this would have been such a massively difficult keyword for us to rank whereas this on the other hand was a much easier keyword for us to rank so that's how we decide which keyword we want to go after which keyword we want to avoid we actually have a look at the SOPs. it's like an open playbook there we have we can directly see how many backlinks that those pages have how many keywords how many sites that are ranking have lower dr and then based on that we take a call whether or not we want to enter in that space so hope that cl clarifies that doubt similarly what we'll do is we'll go through this whole list and we'll look at all of the keywords that we can target and we'll come up with a list of 20 30 40 collection pages list of keywords that will create our collection pages around that and we'll make sure that okay our, our store has all of these uh, keywords in place so this kind of sums up the whole uh, keywords section how we go after that similar thing we'll do for the product pages as well so if you just follow this exact process and do the research over and over again you'll have the exact list of keywords that you want to create your collection and product pages upon and that would give you you a very solid foundation to create your e-commerce and shopify store on so yeah that sums up the keyword research part now we'll move on to the on-page seo part now for on-page seo what I do is I'd actually open some of these pages and show you exactly how to do on page SEO. So we'll open some of these pages and see what kind of on page SEO they are doing and what they're missing. So you'd exactly know what not to miss and what to do on your on page SEO. So this is a Chrome extension that we have developed in house and we'll be releasing this pretty soon. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the notification icon. And this is a free Chrome extension that will be coming out very soon. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get notified when this is out. First thing first for collection page, what we recommend is you have some sort of content here, which they have done really well. That's nice. And then have a list of product pages. And then after the product pages, you should also have again some content here where the purpose of this content is you list down some of the features, frequently asked questions, maybe some reviews, and you use that section to contextually interlink pages between your site. So other collection pages that are more relevant, other products that are relevant, you, you contextually interlink from here. This section the, at the above, you can make this shorter and just be on point that what this page is about. It's about this particular collection and just get into the products and after that that section you can keep it more detailed here you can have like 800,000 words and where you can contextually interlink all of this stuff so what that would do is it would also pass SEO link juice from your collection pages to other collection pages to other product pages as well as what that would do is when you build backlinks to these pages the link juice would flow to everywhere on the site and Google prefers ranking collection pages so the more content you have, the more relevant content you add onto the pages, that gives Google even more reasons to rank your website. So that's one thing. 
the next thing is I, I can see their SEO score is 73 which is not bad so if you see their meta title is above the 60 characters so 60 characters is the limit after which Google truncates your title in the SOPs that's the limit up to which Google shows your title when someone searches in Google so your meta title should be under 60 characters your meta description is when someone searches for something in Google. So let's say if someone is searching for office chair, I'll just do that. So this part that you see here, this is called meta description. So that is limited to 160 characters. So you have to make sure you keep that within that range. Your H1 heading should always be one and it should ideally be the meta title tag of your page. So when you do the meta title tag, always make sure that your main keyword is right there at the start of the keyword. So here, if your main keyword is off, I think we, we had started this with office waiting room chairs. So I would have office waiting room chair here as the starting of the keyword and then I'll have anything else. Similarly in the description also I'll make sure to have office waiting room chair and then I'll have anything else there. So when you do that in the title and your h1 tag is the meta title then your h1 tag would also have the keyword. These are the most important real estate when it comes to Google ranking so make sure the keyword is there in the meta title, is there in the h1, is there in meta description. Right the canonical URL should be self-referencing which is good here word count on this page is a thousand words which is also good so you can add more content after the product pages just keep the intro part shorter and after the product pages you can have the more meat there and you can contextually interlink to other pages so that's what you can do if you see the headings yeah here they're missing a very critical piece of information which is in the headings they should have the main keyword which is office furniture whatever the keyword we're looking at office waiting room chairs that should have been present here if we look at that office waiting room chair should be in the h1 headings and even in the h2 headings i would ideally recommend some variation of the main keyword should be present in an h2 heading apart from that everything else look good so in the link section if you see there are some empty links going so make sure the problem is not there on your side internal and external so if you see there are a lot of external links going so make sure you keep it to a minimum and only link out to the external links that you're actually willing out to link to so no external links that you don't want to link to sometimes what happens is there are apps or plugins who link out to random sites or, or pages so make sure you using my plugin you can check what kind of external links are there on your page and you can remove them if if uh, some of them doesn't make any sense right so this would also show you some suggestions of what exactly can improve on your site so you should have all of these i mean shopify already gives this like overall user experience should be really good the products should be actually helpful plus the sorting option should be there and all of that so basic user experience should always be kept in mind but apart from that from seo point of view this is exactly what you should be doing this covers the collection pages on page part seo and if you just do these basic uh, stuff correct and similarly for product pages you do the basic stuff right you get the headings h1 heading meta title seo descriptions and all of that right you'll be able to rank for most of the keywords without actually requiring backlinks for each of the single page so that kind of sums up how you do on page seo for a shopify website the collection pages and for product pages we'll now move into how you do off page seo and off page seo is such a crucial part because without links you would kind of be able to rank only up to a point and to outrank your competitors and bigger sites like amazon and uh, walmart and to get their traffic share you'd need to do link building so we'll move into it now so for backlinks we actually had a look at when we were doing the keyword research we saw how we determine exactly the backlinks number of backlinks that's there for a keyword we'll take that exactly one step ahead in terms of we'll do the same thing but for the whole domain for a competitor so let's say this was one of our competitor office chairs USA and they are doing well in terms of organic traffic for us which they are overall so what I'll do is we'll repeat the same step but for the whole site so we'll go to their backlink profile we'll apply the same filter which is do follow one backlink per domain and then we'll apply DR above 15 so that filters out the spam and scammy links that are there. So this shows us that, okay, they have got 42 group of backlinks. That means 42 links are there that are actually good. So this gives you a very quick idea of how many good backlinks that your competitor has and these many number of backlinks you would also require overall to reach a similar level of traffic that they have. Now the next thing that you can actually do is segregate this a number of links and basically create an actual sheet so what i'll do is i'll create one for you 
what you can do is do this exactly for like dr between 15 to let's say 40 dr between 40 to 70 dr 70 to 90 so we created these three tabs and and what we'll do is let's say this is your competitor number one this is your competitor number two this is your competitor number three so we do that and what we'll do is you can use the hrefs and take a note of how many links that they have so we do that let's say they have five links in this range they have four links in this range they have five links in this range similarly i'll just fill some random numbers you can take a look at exactly how many links they have in each range and and we'll just do that and what we can do is we can just take a sum of this here the sum has been taken and then we can divide this by three whatever the number is right so the average is here and i can just drag this here this is the number of links required for you to rank and in the dr ranges actually this column is not even required this is how you'd exactly know how many links to build and in which range you need to build this and all of that and this is how we do it for our clients and we know exactly how many links they would require to build and do all of that so when you do the link building it's not a blind link building you would be ha you would have exact sense of okay this many links this many dr range we would be needing to build links and you would know exactly okay that once we are done with this kind of link building this would be the traffic level that we are at so you'd be able to calculate all of the roi of this link building so for example this site that we were having a look at if i go back and just go to the subdomain so I think this was not this side, but for this side, for example, they are getting around 27, 30,000 monthly organic traffic. So to get this kind of traffic, you'd definitely roughly need to spend around 60, 70K in ads. And this is just a ballpark figure I'm saying. So you know from there that, okay, this is the kind of ROI link building and SEO generate for you. And from there, how much amount of sales you'd be able to get from it. So that's how we calculate the ROI for us and for our clients and how link building would change your SEO completely. So yeah, just to summarize all of this, this is how we do SEO. This is how we do keyword research. This is how we do on-page SEO. This is how we build backlinks. And just to show you once more, this is the kind of results that we get 1000% traffic increases within five months for our Shopify clients. So if you're looking to actually get similar results, the link is in the description. Just book a call with us. And together with you on the call, I'll have a look at your store and I'll suggest how we can improve your SEO and how we can work together to get you to ranking for more and more keywords and get much more ROI from your SEO campaign. Apart from that, you can follow me on Twitter where I share a lot of these SEO nuggets and on LinkedIn where I share all of these super SEO case studies and golden nuggets that you can utilize on your Shopify store and to grow it yourself. And make sure to check the description box of this video because there'd been an SEO goodie that you don't want to miss out. Till the next time.